Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first uh, gathering for the brand new Instrument Identifiers Community of Practice. Um, welcome. Um, today we have three speakers for you. Uh, and again, uh, questions for those speakers uh, can come towards the end of our call today. Uh, we have Andrew Maynard, uh, who is uh, Associate Professor at the Centre for uh, Microscopy, Characterization and Analysis at the University of Western Australia. And he's going to present on Instrument Identifiers, the NIF Trusted Data Repositories Project Approach. Uh, and then we will have Andrew Jenke, uh, Associate Director of Research Technology uh, at the University of Sydney, who is going to talk about the RDA Instrument Identifiers Group. Um, and then we will have a quick update from Siobhan McCafferty um, from the ARDC skills team on activities in Australia. And finally, at the end, we have some uh, uh, questions and interactive questions uh, session. So we're going to kick off uh, with uh, Andrew uh, Maynard, I have to say which Andrew, uh, uh, Andrew Maynard uh, on uh, instrument identifiers, the NIF Trusted Data Repositories Project approach. Take it away, Andrew. All right. Uh, so, my name's Andrew Maynard. I'm a Joint Microscopy Australia and National Imaging Facility Informatics Fellow. I'm based at the Centre for Microscopy Characterisation and Analysis at the University of Western Australia. So, I'll talk about instrument identifiers and I'm going to talk about that from the context of the NIF Trusted Data Repositories project. So, very quickly, uh, just a slide on the National Imaging Facility. Uh, this is a $200 million Australia-wide uh, network of characterisation facilities. You can see on the map to the right, there are a number of nodes around the country. Uh, NIF provides state-of-the-art imaging capability to Australian researchers for characterising humans, animals, plants and materials. And its MRI, PET and CT scanners essentially produce vast amounts of valuable research data. In 2017, uh, ANS and RDS, uh, now of course the ARDC, uh, funded uh, the Trusted Data Repositories Program and one of the projects funded under this program was the NIF Trusted Data Repositories Project. This was a 12-month uh, project which completed in December 2017 and broadly the aim was to enhance the quality and durability of, uh, uh, sorry, quality, durability and reliability of data generated by NIF uh, by quality, we meant uh, data had to be captured according to a NIF agreed process. Durable, the data had to be guaranteed for at least uh, 10 years to be available. And reliable researchers, uh, uh, the data had to be useful for researchers in the future, so it had to have sufficient evidential metadata as well as having uh, being available in one or more open data formats. The motivation for the project, uh, from this point of view, it was to enhance the quality of the data required across its facilities. And from the ARDC's point of view, it was to help to establish trusted data repository services around the country. Uh, there were four NIF nodes involved, uh, UWA, the lead node, uh, UQ, uh, it's, uh, University of New South Wales and Monash University. Now the project uh, scope was limited to MRI data, but post-funding, uh, the results have been generalised to other instrument modalities. The project had uh, four key outcomes. Uh, the first was a document which we call the NIF Agreed Process, which outlines uh, what's needed to obtain trusted data from uh, NIF instruments. So this included uh, having uh, quality control standard operating procedures, quality control cross-reference, um, but also importantly, having an instrument record and an instrument ID for each instrument. The second uh, outcome uh, was another document describing the requirements uh, necessary and sufficient for a NIF trusted data repository service. Uh, this was platform agnostic, uh, and one of the requirements is that uh, it should be possible within the repository service to link a data set to an instrument ID. And then three and four, number three uh, was to have some exemplar repository services across the four participating nodes. Uh, in this case, uh, based on different uh, platforms, XNAP and MyTARDIS. And finally, a self-assessment against uh, uh, international core trust seal for trustworthy data repositories. 
So, in a nutshell, uh, if we take a look at uh, the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we can see we define an instrument record for each of our instruments. We have a unique handle, uh, which we uh, use to represent our instrument ID, and we have an instrument description. We park that handle and the description into a record in Research Data Australia, which is a data and service discovery portal uh, hosted by the ARDC. If you look at the top left now uh, at uh, an instrument and its associated instrument PC. On that instrument PC, we install an uploader client. Uh, so when a user acquires some data, that uploader client pushes the data up to the repository service. So if you look on the right hand side of the diagram, uh, across the four nodes, we have uh, our four repository services. Uh, we log in with the Australian Access Federation. We organise data by uh, projects, uh, and a project can contain one or more data sets, and a data set can contain one or more data files. Now, importantly, uh, a data set is linked to an instrument. So, in the repository service itself, in the database, we have a record uh, for that instrument that includes. Uh, such things as uh, a link to a quality control project, but more importantly for the purposes of this discussion, a handle uh, which resolves to the record that we've parked in Research Data Australia. So as we go from instrument to repository service according to the NIF agreed process, uh, when the user uploads their data, they include NIF minimal metadata, which includes the instrument ID. Uh, the native data goes up from the instrument as well as conversions to one or more open data formats. The instrument operator can also upload quality control data to the repository service. So for any data set that is in the uh, repository, uh, we can cross-reference by date to the most uh, relevant quality control information to understand the uh, state of the instrument when the data was acquired. This is uh, one of the services. Uh, this is the one at uh, UWA, called TrueDAT at UWA. Uh, you can see the landing page here. I've logged in in my own account. Uh, the service here is based on MyTARDIS, which is uh, developed at uh, Monash University, but we've customised it in a particular way for this project. Here, uh, the word experiment we map to mean project. So wherever you see experiment, uh, just think project. If I look at uh, now one of the projects, or experiments, project number five, we can see that on the right-hand side it contains 62 data sets. One of those data sets I've highlighted there. And you can see uh, it's, uh, there's, there's a reference to the instrument from which the data came, a Brooker Biospec 9.4T MRI. And there's a little hyperlink to the right of it there called the uh, RDA, which resolves to the record in Research Data Australia. And we have a little bit of additional information too, the facility to which the instrument belongs at the CMCA. Another view uh, showing data set, data file view within the repository. Again, I've just circled uh, uh, the area that shows that the instrument from which the data comes from and the uh, hyperlink to the record in Research Data Australia. So in the project, how did we uh, handle or mint instrument identifiers? Well, it was a two-step process. Number one, we mint a handle through ARDC's uh, identify my data handle service and we ensured that that handle resolved to the URL uh, in step two, the, re the record that we have in Research Data Australia. So step two was actually creating that record in Research Data Australia, including in the record the instrument uh, identifier as well as a detailed description of the instrument and any related uh, websites. Now I should point out that access to those two services is uh, through the institution, so we didn't do that directly at the CMCA. Uh, at UWA, that meant going to UWA uh, library to uh, be able to mint the handle and to create the record in Research Data Australia. Once uh, we have a record in Research Data Australia, it's possible to find that record uh, via the advanced search function. So if you go to the, the main landing page for RDA, uh, you click on advanced search, you then get a pop-up. Uh, if you look in the bottom left-hand uh, corner of this slide, you can see that uh, I've selected here services and tools. Uh, once I've done that, I can enter some uh, search terms. So in this case, I've chosen the organisation to be the CMCA, where I'm based, and the description of the instrument, uh, a biospec. 
and then up comes the record. Uh, I split the record into two halves uh, on, on each side of the slide here. Uh, so on the left hand side you can see a description of the instrument, uh, where it's located, uh, contact details. On the right hand side you can see related organisations, so the CMCA, and related websites. And importantly on the bottom right hand side you can see we have the handle, the uh, persistent identifier for that instrument. Now in the project we decided uh, to handle updates to instruments in the following way. We decided that what needs to be done is that the RDA record should be updated uh, whenever we make a change to the software and hardware of the instrument. Uh, so we simply update the record but put a date stamp in there so that uh, it's clear uh, when that update uh, occurred. We also decided that uh, should the uh, hardware and software up to updates be uh, significant enough that that constitutes a change in the system or model number from the point of view of the vendor, then we would deem that the instrument is in fact a new instrument and we'd have to mint a new handle uh, as well as create a new record in Research Data Australia. Uh, post NIF uh, Trusted Data Repository Project at UWA, the UWA Library embarked on a special project to create instrument records for all of our 51 instruments uh, in a local database, a pure database. That involved uh, four steps, uh, bulk import of uh, instrument data into pure via XML, uh, minting of Research Data Australia handle identifiers, uh, manual addition of uh, minted identifiers into pure records, and harvest of equipment uh, metadata from pure to Research Data Australia via custom crosswalk. So the information here was gleaned from uh, the the CMCA web pages and also by talking to our individual instrument uh, managers. The custom crosswalk uh, meant taking records in Pure and uh, mapping those over to RIF-CS schema uh, required for ingestion into Research Data Australia. Uh, so Melanie Barlow at ARDC created the original uh, crosswalk in 2017 for data sets at UWA to park them into Research Data Australia. And then again in 2018, uh, uh, added uh, capability for equipment or instrument records. And uh, that was in consultation with the UWA library team. And this crosswork is now being used by other pure users in Australia to harvest into Research Data Australia. And every time we update pure, we review the crosswalk itself. So I thank here uh, Katina Tufexis, uh, who's the Research Data Coordinator at the UWA Library for this particular uh, information on this slide. This is an example of the Google Doc uh, that was used to collaborate uh, between UWA and ARDC uh, in, in order to do the mapping between the Pure Schema and RIF-CS uh, needed for RDA. So, if I have a look now at the uh, Brooker Biospec MRI scanner again, its instrument record, the one I showed earlier, on the left of this slide you can see the record that's in Research Data Australia. On the right hand side you can see, on the, right -hand side, you can see the uh, UWA uh, record, the master record in Pure. And what we've done, it's a little different to the original uh, project, is that the handle now that's in Research Data Australia actually resolves to the master record in Pure rather than to the RDA record itself. All right, uh, some outstanding issues from the project. First of all, how do we standardise instrument records across the National Imaging Facility and indeed other increase capabilities? So in this particular project, we had three instruments, uh, um, uh, three sites I should say, that had the same instrument. And when you look at their records in RDA, the descriptions are slightly different between sites and the websites included are slightly different, so we need to standardise that. How do we best accommodate instrument updates? So as I said, the approach we took was simply to update the records with uh, date stamp changes. Who's actually responsible for maintaining these records? Is uh, Research Data Australia itself a suitable place to host these records long term? Is the handle a suitable persistent identifier to use for instruments? And finally, how do we encourage our researchers to actually cite instrument identifiers in papers they publish? Uh, so 
one thing we can do is to say that by doing so, that simplifies their description of the instrument in the paper. They can simply include the, uh, the handle. Doing that then, of course, enables uh, NIF to be able to track publication outcomes. We can do searches in papers to find uh, who cited our particular instruments. And with that, I say thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, if we have any uh, questions uh, uh, beyond uh, a couple of technical glitches in the middle of that, um, and I can see some thanks rolling in uh, for you, Andrew. Uh, we might just move straight on to Andrew Janke uh, presenting on the Instrument Identifiers Group from the Research Data Alliance. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Andrew Janke from the University of Sydney now. When I did a lot of this work, though, I was working at UQ. Um, and I was also seconded to, at the time, to one of the ARDC subsidiaries. So here we go, anyway. So instruments at the time when I decided to join this group, there was no consistency in the way instruments were referred to. There was some consistency in how the records were entered into things like Research Data Australia, but how the instrument itself was recognised was not consistent. So I figured that was something I wanted to have a go at. Um, this sort of happened out of a, a group here called the Persistent Identification of Instruments Working Group, which is one of the subgroups of um, Research Data Alliance, with the URL at the top, and these slides I understand were made available towards the end of this. Um, they had a remit, they were quite early on in the group, in the formation of the group. Research Data Alliance has quite a process around how these groups are formalised and how they're recognised and how they're endorsed, which I'll step through a little of the detail of. Um, it, and this sort of describes the, the journey towards PIDINS, as we're calling it. Um, I was presenting in a DMP, an RDA DMP group, and Marcus happened to turn up, which I think is one of the strengths of the RDA conference or the plenaries, as they're called, in that you see a wide, a wide attendance of people across all the areas, as opposed to just in my own narrow area that I was looking for. He invited me, Marcus Stocker, to be part of this group. At the time, there was fairly uh, north, well, actually Northern Europe, dominated and they were interested in having a southern hemisphere chair as well so i joined at that stage and i submitted a nif national Museum facility user case to the group turns out that our nif user case was quite a lot different to most of the other user cases within the working group which was a good thing um, in that for most of them they were more concerned of problems around uh, multiple instruments and multiple ids to make up a group so for example they were looking at thousands of instruments being um, towed across the top of the Atlantic Ocean in one case and how all those identifiers in a, in a mesh would come back together towards a single data set and where the data would come from. Others were interested in things like how a long-term instrument attached to, ID attached to a telescope, how that might change over time and follow the images, which is probably the closest to what we were doing, but there were, a lot of other use cases which were completely different to what I was used to. So for that, for, for that use case, it was very interesting for me to try and develop a instrument ID that was different to just my own local use case. So I joined as the chair. It meant that a lot of the work we did because the geographic distance was predominantly around GitHub and Google Docs. And it also meant we turned out running alternate meetings because there was no good time zone. Um, so this group still runs. I've since um, stood down as a chair since taking up my position as UCID, and there's now a new group, which I'll show you towards the end of this. And at the moment, we're back to monthly telecons, which I still join, although as the time gets closer to the RDA plenaries, they tend to be more consistent. So what I'm sort of saying to all you listening there from our local community is get involved in groups like this. Um, you can get much further reach, and you'll get a lot of support quite quickly from people in these groups. So. Just to give you an example, this shows, for example, one of the agendas that we would typically work through um, and how we go through towards getting um, endorsement of a particular ID, and in this case, PIDENS. An interesting thing to note, too, is just because you're part of these groups, you don't have to join, or, or sorry, you don't have to attend an RDA meet. I'm yet to attend an RDA meet, and still I've participated in a large number of these. I think it's a conference which very successfully makes use of teleconferencing. 
and video conferencing, and I've presented at a number of these without being in attendance, so it's not mandatory. So what came out of this is what I was discussing before, is we had a large number of use cases submitted, and if you look at the table here, what's important to note is that whilst there are a large number of submitted use cases, it doesn't actually mean that they all go on to ratification. Um, so you'll see that from the, the plan, yes and no's, and whether they tabled, yes and no. So the NIF use case, yes, was in the text, and then we submitted one, and it was tabled, and it didn't actually turn into the plan because it turned out some of the other use cases um, were overlapping with it. So we've absorbed some details in there, um, but it is included in the final specification. So there's a number of other planned ones, as you see further down, who we're yet to see a submission from, It'll give you an idea of the interest in instrument identifiers across a whole wide range of area of research. It's not just confined to the characterization area for people who are interested in doing things. It's largely characterization, but not only characterization. So from there, where do we go? A user story sort of looks like this, and, and this is a template for the sort of things you have to achieve to get um, endorsement as, as such of these things. And it tends to be a lot more, as you see from the comments on this doc, about so that. So it's not just I need an instrument identifier. It's I need an instrument identifier so that I can track my research output to the university. I need an instrument identifier so that I can understand where that my data came from. And unsurprisingly, this matches a lot of what Andrew Maynard was saying. But it's always about what you want to achieve, how you're going to do it, and why. So being as specific as possible is important when you're part of this group. So what comes out of this is, is a schema, um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then in time, once you've gone through the process, so this you'll find from is over a year, just over a year and a half ago, where we gained endorsement. So this means we've gone through the process of building the use cases, presenting it at RDA plenary, getting sufficient buy-in from the community, at which stage the preliminary schema is endorsed or the preliminary use case is endorsed. And from there, this is what comes out. This is the schema that is the current um, RDA-blessed schema for persistent identifiers of instruments. Um, important things to point out here is that the unique identifier is not specified. At the moment, it seemed more useful to allow the individuals to specify whether it's a handle or a pearl or a DOI, whatever works for them, because there was a lot of discussion around the, the correct type of identifier, so maybe we'll go for ratification of that at a later date around a type of identifier. Um, the owner, which is a very consistent thing across all of the use cases, contact details, manufacturer, and all the standard things. So you'll see this is not much more beyond what you would normally think to be in. The difference is this is now part of the schema, it will map into schema.org, so meaning if you use this structure for your persistent identifiers in your instrument metadata, it will automatically now be harvested by all of the areas within schema.org. That's the purpose of the ratification. So that's effectively where we're at now, um, and that's it. And I have to quote Natasha as saying, if you, want it, if you want it, then you better put a pit on it. I think that's one of the best lines I've ever heard, and I'm going to keep sticking with it. So that's all from me. I don't know if I press stop now. Maybe right, thank you, Andrew. Uh, and uh, so the final uh, bit that we have uh, presentation-wise um, is just a brief update from Siobhan McCafferty, uh, now on, on current and slightly future work within the Australian context uh, in uh, instrument identifiers. Take it away. Cool, thank you, Tom. This is really brief, um, but just to give you an idea of what's going on. So there's there's currently discussions going on uh, about PIDs instruments uh, at that slightly higher level than ARDC are involved, uh, and we're keen to make sure everyone knows what's going on. Um, there'll be a meeting organised for, I think it's Wednesday the 11th, with um, Joe Schapt is organising it, uh, Ian Duncan, Natasha Simon will be there. Um, and they're organising the agenda and we'll be talking about that, so we'll hopefully report back to that next time this community meets. Um, and there's also a discussion going on uh, about NCRES, um, across NCRES and all of the facilities there. Um, we're hoping for more movement on that in the new year. So um, myself and Natasha will be organizing a meeting 
early in the, the new year and we'll be happy to report back on that also. And that's it. Right, thank you. Um, uh, Andrew Maynard, if you could join us again. Uh, we have one question in the forum uh, uh, for you. Um, do you know if the instrument identifiers used by NIF, uh, that those handles that is, uh, are being referenced in NIF research publications? Is that a goal in terms of tracking impact or is that not so important to NIF? Okay, I think you can hear me now. Yep. Uh, so at present, uh, that's that's uh, uh, a goal we'd like to have is that, that all our users are uh, citing the instrument identifiers. But uh, at present, I don't not aware of uh, even a single case where we've done that. Um, so yeah, we definitely have to find out a, a good way to encourage our users to do so. And yes, it is an ultimate goal that uh, uh, as our users cite. Uh, instrument identifiers in papers, that means it gives us a way of, of tracking within NIF and indeed Microscopy Australia, uh, usage of our instruments and, and, and getting attribution for that. I think we had a another question about, uh, 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 I think that was actually directed at you Andrew Maynard, um, why a handle wouldn't be valid in the future. In I think it specifically related to uh, I think Natasha, you did respond to that um, by saying that uh, because it resolves to the pure record, um, or did you have some more detail to add to that? Um, so the handle, I guess, needs to to resolve to the definitive record uh, at UWA. We've chosen that to be our pure database within UWA, but every time we add an instrument to that database. Uh, the metadata is then uh, harvested into Research Data Australia. So for anybody around the world, they can just go to Research Data Australia, search on the instrument, they'll get uh, the record coming up there in Research Data Australia. But if you click on the uh, uh, the handle itself, it'll resolve back to the master record. I mean, that's just a matter of uh, preference, I guess. Uh, okay, Andrew, uh, while we're, Andrew may not, uh, while we're, uh, um, uh, sticking with you, um, where do the state damp changes to instrument metadata appear on the front end? In the description field or in a dedicated field? Uh, so any changes to the instrument itself? I don't think we well, have an example amongst our, any of our uh, uh, instruments that we have records for where we've included any changes to date uh, and that's, that's part of uh, what we need to do uh, as NIF and, and uh, increase facilities to the future is to find what's the best way uh, to do that. So the suggestion we have in our uh, Trusted Data Repositories documentation is we simply include a date stamp in the uh, description. So we just simply uh, edit the description to reflect changes in terms of uh, pardon me, hardware and software. Uh, that's not ideal and I, I you know, open to any suggestions for, for how to do better to the future. Sounds like a excellent uh, rabbit hole to go down for a community of practice. Um, so Andrew Jenke, uh, uh, can you say who is using the schema currently or is it just too new? Uh, and also- No, no uh, one's using it officially just yet. Um, the people are welcome to adopt it, but it's not an officially endorsed, um, sorry, the, the group is endorsed. The schema itself is up for comment right now. Um, there will be some who are using it because it, it's obvious the path that it's going down, but uh, it's not an official schema of RDA yet, as I understand. Okay, terrific. Can I bring in uh, Paula Martinez, uh, National Characterization Training Coordinator at uh, NIF? Uh, you're, you're missing from our panel right now, um, but uh, now would be a great moment to. Um, we're going to now turn this uh, back on the audience, unless we have any more questions for either of the Andrews. Okay. Um, maybe we go through the questions that were sent through the registration form, and I'd like to uh, any of the parties of the speakers to 
to answer what about the timeline in Australia and what specifically do NCRIS facilities are planning to do around assisting identifiers for instruments? Uh, maybe, maybe I'll speak first, other uh, Andrew. Uh, so I guess we we don't have a uh, an official timeline to get this done. Uh, ASAP is, is, is I guess the, the appropriate answer. Uh, and part of the problem there is uh, funding such activities and making sure that uh, uh, we can achieve this. Uh, and ARDC does have. Uh, uh, there's just been a new uh, platforms call and that's an opportunity for us uh, to look at this particular uh, uh, problem of, of uh, instrument identifiers, instrument records. So yeah, as soon as possible. So it's, it really requires funding and uh, cooperation, collaboration to make it happen. Yeah, and maybe we need to highlight that this opportunity that we are putting up now with the webinar is to collect people feedback about how to move forward. So this is the first initial activity, but then we want to meet in person and set the goals and the timelines together. Do you want to add something to that, Tom? I, I just note that we have some more uh, questions rolling in, um, some of them uh, related to this point anyway. Um, Natasha is asking uh, you, Andrew Jenke, um, has there been any analysis done on the most common identifiers used for instruments? I would think it, uh, it would be DOIs and handles. Uh, you also mentioned pearls though. Is anyone using those? We had all three. Um, the analysis of that is on the GitHub site where you can dig in into use cases and they do show that. Obviously, the most the largest use case is the one with the most instrument, which is the oceanographers who have one instrument ID per trailing thing, and they have thousands of them floating around in oceans. So how do you measure what's the most, most used? Uh, a question for anyone on the, uh, on the panel. Um, have publishers uh, recognized persistent instrument identifiers? I would say they don't have to. Um, I don't know if some have. What I do know is that publishers recognise schema.org. And the, this was discussed specifically in the PIDINS group and the, the approach taken was, well, there's a lot of effort in getting publishers to uptake a new one. If we publish what we're doing in schema.org, if it's compliant with that, we don't have to do any work. It's already there. And not only that, we get Google Scholar, whether you like it or not, and a whole bunch of other things for free by doing it that way. So is PIDINS um, taken up by publishers? Yes, because it uses schema.org. Uh, I think that uh, we have another question in here. Um, does uh, does NIF as a facility have, as a facility, okay, uh, have a unique persistent identifier? Now I think, uh, I'm just to clarify the parsing on that sentence, um, uh, we might be merging uh, identifiers for facilities there, or uh, is the question uh, relating to um, the approach taken by NIF or the preferred um, identifier for its instruments uh, rather than the facility itself? Um, but I think in, in, uh, in the second case, um, part of that discussion is actually happening right now. Um, so the, the meeting that Siobhan uh, mentioned, um, uh, We'll actually have follow-on activities with um, Anchorage facilities as well, uh, trying to coordinate around this. Siobhan, did you want to uh, mention the data site activity at all? Uh, how so? <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe there's a few we'll things going on there. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, uh, happy to talk route? about that. And probably uh, a, a different um, context because there's, there's some stuff going on with DOIs that we'll probably have a chat about later. Right, okay. Um, I think uh, more, no. more to the point, um, ARDC is looking at a, a more unified plan across PIDs uh, and we want to have some kind of road mapping and uh, possibly advisory material around this uh, in the next year, uh, even at just a higher level. Um, so watch this space. Uh, we're getting more into the weeds here. Uh, does the schema cater for a grouping of individual instruments? Um, 
Andrew. <laughs> Andrew to me, yes. Yes, it does. And that's one of the, yes, this was debated back and forth a long time. It's something that we, myself and Nif, I didn't really care about so much. Um, but then we got down the wormhole of what's an instrument. You know, or a set of coils in an MRI machine, an instrument is the instrument, an instrument is the. But I tried to stay away from that, but in the end, we ended up with a, a schema where you can have a sub instrument ID. So the answer is yes. Well, I think um, getting back into that tricky bit uh, straight away, uh, the clarification on the question about NIF as a facility was that it was about the facility itself. Um, and I believe that's in the context of CSIRO being interested in um, uh, doing identifiers for facilities at the moment. Um, uh, Andrew Jenke, do you uh, would you be able to comment on that in uh, and it's what relevant mapping there might be to the RDA um, group there? I went in with the use case that an instrument is an MRI machine, um, not. I wasn't talking at, when I was at UQ at the time, the CAI. I didn't go in asking for an instrument identifier for CAI. I could have, and it would match to the schema in the way they had sub instrument IDs. Um, it was more around that there was already a reasonably good way within the university I was at to identify outputs of a centre based upon ORCID, based upon the people. So it was more about trying to get an identifier for the instrument than the centre. Now, your use case may differ. Um, I, the schema would be able to handle it, but it wasn't something that was a focus of mine. Uh, uh, Natasha has jumped in to clarify that data site have said that they will adapt their DOI metadata to the identifier schema of the RDA group so people can better describe instruments with DOIs. Uh, so there's an update on the status of using DOIs um, as uh, instrument identifiers. Uh, uh, I have a fragmentary question about unified PIDs. Um, I might let a, uh, a, um, uh, a, um, a revised version of that question roll in before we go. Um, and while I'm waiting to see if any more questions roll in, I would say this is the, the, uh, the idea behind this community of practice is that we, uh, we continue to meet. Um, and we can pick up uh, more specific activities as we go along. Um, so uh, your uh, registration for this um, uh, for this webinar is um, uh, we're taking as an indication of interest um, in uh, future activities. So we will uh, email you um, uh, after this webinar to talk about follow-up activities, most likely in the new year at this stage. Um, uh, this is a, a great time for you to throw questions in the question box um, that we cannot answer today, but that we would like to uh, put on the agenda for future meetings. Um, so if you have any suggestions uh, about future activities, then feel free to chuck those in the question box as well. Um, and I cannot promise that I will be able to answer them uh, in the next five minutes. Um, okay. Uh, 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 we have a question about Wednesday's meeting. I think, um, Siobhan, do you, are you able to um, contextualise that meeting uh, at all? Or uh... Uh, I can give a little bit more context, yeah. So there's been discussion about uh, instrument PIDs for uh, data management kind of records and that kind of thing uh, at different universities and, and institutions and it's become pretty apparent that we need something so there's a this is an, an opening discussion uh, about what ARDC can do in that space uh, and what are the needs um, around that space at the moment I'm sure Natasha could probably give you a lot more in-depth answer but I, I'm not sure quite how much um, details needed at this point as well for the community. I think we all know that there's there's a need for a, an instrumentation PID or agreement across it. The, the scheme is a great start, but we need to look at um, how our institution is going to use it. Why would they want to use it? Can we get wide agreement on this as well? Uh, and what kind of drivers there are there? And there's definitely that business case as um, Andrew so many Andrews um, mentioned about being able to look at who's using your instrumentation 
uh, and how you can put some kind of value on that um, and maybe recoup costs or, or look at uh, funding cases. So when the meeting happens, um, we'll definitely come back to you guys with a, a lot more information on that. Sorry, I can't be more useful in the space at the moment. Uh, but that's okay because uh, Natasha is now unmuted ah. and uh, can uh, and add any more detail. Thank you, Tom. Um, thanks, uh, Siobhan covered most of it. Uh, so Joe Shapter is the Pro Vice Chancellor for Research Infrastructure at the University of Queensland. And he's also the new head of the Australian Orchid uh, Consortium Governance Group. So he's, a, he's a, becoming a little bit of a PIDS champion now, Joe. Um, he's also on the ARDC board. Anyway, he um, organised a meeting here at UQ um, with myself and Ian Duncan, who's also from ARDC, and a bunch of UQ people to talk about um, the need for persistent identifiers for instruments here within the UQ system um, because uh, they're installing new systems here and trying to sort of get it right from the start, really. And so Joe has started this research infrastructure group among really senior people at institutions of his kind of level and so this is the first meeting of that group so i think there's multi-layer discussions happening around the pids for instruments um, and as long as we can all tie them together and we're all sort of along the same lines then then it will be successful but basically that that level that he is at is really the decision making level about what uh, for example to decide what schema to adopt in um, research infrastructure within an institution. Um, this group is more about the practical implementation of how we do it um, and we need another discussion, uh, although this, this one bleeds right into it, um, between the NCRIS facilities about how to how to get it right across the NCRIS facilities, which is what, what Paul is talking about. I think we actually just need a meeting around that as well, uh, with specifically with the NCRIS facilities. So we'll sort of attack this on multi-layers. Um, um, but I think it's really exciting space um, and it's great to, to see the developments in this area, both Australia, in across Australia and internationally as well. Thanks, Natasha. Um, I think we'll leave you uh, unmuted uh, because you might be able to jump in. Uh, we have a clarification of the question from earlier, but I think it was directed at Andrew Jenke and we seem to have lost him uh, at this point. Um, no, still here. Oh, okay. He's just uh, uh, disembodied. Just lost from video. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, uh, with the strategy or work of unified or unifying PIDs, uh, is this to control the proliferation of PIDs and control legacy uh, due to poor design and so on? Yeah, exactly. Um, part of the work also of the group is to figure how we um, crosswalk, I think is the word, existing is in this area into the pit in space. I would say it's not a focus and it's more about having a engaged user from that area. But yes, it is part of the goal to be as compatible as possible. Uh, we have another question. Um, so with uh, instrument PIDs, uh, do you think, and I think this is might be uh, more broadly put, uh, do you think the ARC would be keen on this for the LEAF funded instruments around the country? Uh, it would be very nice to have a PID for each instrument funded uh, so that there is a unified approach to what has been funded and how you can access it, how it has been used and so on. Anyone want to grab that one? I think it would be very nice. I think I can just say that. <laughs> Go yeah. for it, and yeah. yeah, That's my answer is yes, please. Um, from all and from all my hats I've worn, yes, I've needed from all areas as a user, as a facility manager, and now in research infrastructure and or research in a major organisation. Absolutely, because we, how do you calculate the value of these things long term? So my answer is absolute. I want someone else comment. Siobhan? Yeah, uh, they absolutely want this kind of thing. Um, but given the nature of PIDs, uh, there's a, a need for there to be a decision within the community about what we're using and how we use it first before it gets adopted by folks like ARC. Um, so the job of communities like this um, is to, to get that agreement and, and get upscale our use of something that we agree on. So it becomes um, just a, an of course, of course we're going to use this identifier for, um, for those folks as well. Um, so it's interesting to see that while there's a 
a desire for it from all areas. There's quite a lot of us watching each other and seeing who's going to do what first. Um, and I think being definite in this space is going to help uh, advance um, folks like ASE picking up instrument identifiers. Um. Andrew Minnett or Paula, do you have anything to add? Uh, I think this. I think we're all thoroughly nodding yes. Um, no, nothing to add. I agree with all those comments. Okay, uh, terrific. Uh, well, at this point, um, unless we get some. Uh, oh, oh, I keep on having to scroll down, and the questions keep coming. Um, so to to both Andrews, oh, that's finally it's easy to say. Uh, do you have any examples of the PIDINT uh, linking to ethics applications and protocols, um, for instance, through protocols.io uh, for given data set or project, or is it through the project? Uh, so speaking speaking from the UWA point of view, uh, yeah, we have a, a project ID uh, to which data is uh, uploaded from instruments, and it's that project ID that can then be linked to uh, but but not but in a manual way uh, to to ethics uh, approvals uh, at the institutional level. But yeah, this could be done in a much nicer way. And maybe Andrew, the other Andrew, could comment here on uh, perhaps uh, the research activity identifier and Shaborn as well, uh, Ray, because I think that probably uh, goes some way to, to, to answering this. It's all this. Yeah, I'm with Andrew one or two, but we wanted to couch himself. Um, it wasn't a focus of the PIDINS group because, you know, oceans don't need ethics. Um, I rapidly discovered that in the area of instrument identifiers, human or ethics related research is actually in the minority, um, which was a surprise to me. So I would argue that it should be at the project level. Um, conceptually, in either case, and while I'm not a part of RAID, I'm still a believer in it. So I'll let Siobhan comment now. Yeah, it's good to have a few true believers around. Um, so yeah, they would absolutely be the place to do it, but we're yet to see a, a full integration. There's a few people looking at using it in that way. Um, you know, can we can we connect it up to uh, Research Master or um, some nice um, source of truth uh, around ethics uh, and permissions? Um, I would love to see someone do this. Uh, if anyone's keen to do a, a little bit of work connecting up RAID to one of their, their ethics platforms, um, drop me an email. That would be cool. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a good thing to do. It'd be nice if someone did it. Um, but as of yet, haven't quite ticked that box. Okay, terrific. Um, for those that uh, missed the uh, one, I see no more questions rolling in. I just uh, mentioned uh, a, a comment way back up at the beginning. Uh, so there are, um, there are, appear to be crosswalks for um, pure and for symplectic uh, rolling around out there. Um, if you are interested, um, then please uh, shoot me an email um, in the interim uh, while we get up uh, our website and um, other mechanisms for sharing information out of this group. Um, Unless uh, we have any more questions roll in in the next 30 seconds while I'm uh, finishing up, uh, I'd like to uh, thank our presenters um, for um, uh, kicking off this uh, community of practice. I hope to see many of you at uh, future community of practice uh, events for this uh, group. Uh, we need to come up with some uh, catchy acronym, I think, because um, uh, uh, that's where it all starts. Um, uh, so please uh, uh, look out for us in the ARDC newsletter or um, via NIF and MA um, uh, newsletters as well. Uh, if you are a representative of another ANCRIS facility um, and are interested in having uh, a greater involvement in this activity, please uh, shoot us an email. Um, at, we're uh, very open to bringing in other people um, from uh, other um, uh, instrument uh, Based facilities um, and otherwise uh, again uh, let's see oh apart from thanks and applause uh, I think we are ready to wrap up so thank you everyone for coming along and uh, again I hope to see you at a future uh, meeting thanks everyone Bye -bye. thank you